On the Isles of Scilly, Toby and Paulie are working round the clock to meet the deadline for their new book about island life. We are up against it massively, so yeah, but we'll do it. Yeah, rise right to the challenge. Ratman and Bobby will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We'll do it. <laughs> but now there's an unexpected delay. Toby's gone off on holiday, and he's not alone. Should we get five kilos? <laughs> <laughs> Bishop Bill flies out to Scilly to throw his weight behind a dramatic new idea to improve life for island children. Well, I think there's no doubt that we do need a new school. The young people are going to have to leave these islands for work, and they've got to be equipped to live in the modern world. And after a troubled year on Scilly, the baptism of a small girl may provide the symbol for a bright new future for the islanders. Like a set of jewels in the ocean, the Isles of Scilly are, without doubt, very beautiful. There's little crime or pollution here. On the smaller off-islands, there aren't even any cars. In fact, on a sunny day, you could be in what the travel brochures would describe as a tropical paradise. If the weather's good, it can still be a busy place right into autumn. But when eventually the holidaymakers go, it soon reverts to the wild and lonely place it was before tourism started to develop here a hundred years ago. In winter, this is not a good place to be for a single man looking for romance. What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What On Scilly, there are more single men to each single girl than virtually anywhere else in England. On top of that, on the smaller off-islands, there are tiny populations. On the most northerly island, St. Martins, there are scarcely a hundred residents. Thank you. All of which might explain why Toby, the landlord of the only pub, the Seven Stones, has been single since the breakup of his second marriage a few years ago. Hello there. Now, though, there's been a dramatic development which Toby can't keep secret any longer. The word is you've got a girlfriend, Toby, is that true? Yeah, yeah, there, is she, true. there she is. <laughs> I love that pig. <laughs> but is this, are the rumours true? Yeah, yeah, I have a, a very nice girlfriend, yeah, called Juliet from, um, from Mausel. Near Penzance on the mainland? Near, near Penzance on the mainland, yeah. How did you meet her? Uh, we met at the farmer's market. What, over here on Sydney? On, on St Mary's, yeah. Wow, so you've been able to... <clears throat> pursue this even though she's on the mainland and yeah we've, again. we've kept in touch by email and and i've been over there a few times and she's come over here a few times yeah, yeah she's, so is this quite a serious thing she's very nice <laughs> very diplomatic <laughs> the one person who's known all along about the blossoming romance is toby's chef paulie who's up against it trying to finish the book they're writing together about their lives on the island. Bit of a serious release. Well, it's, it's moving on that way, you know, I mean, see what happens. I know he likes the woman, they're on the phone every night whenever we're trying to work on the book. About half past ten, you know, the phone's always going and he's upstairs for an hour. And uh, have you met Juliet? I have done, yeah, I've met her um, a couple of times. I was actually there the first time when they met. She, she came over to the stall and she was look, na, looking up natural remedies. And she asked Toby, and Toby looked dumbfounded and went, uh, I don't, but Paul will, and grabbed me and went, oh, Paul, keep it talking, keep it talking. Went, so you take the credit for getting them together? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> Cupid and all. Matchmaker and chef, you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a funny day. <laughs> now Toby's new relationship is to be put to the test. He's told Paulie that he and the new girlfriend are going on their first romantic holiday together. In autumn, the islands become a mecca for a very different sort of visitor. 
hundreds of bird watchers and wildlife enthusiasts in search of species you're unlikely to see on the mainland. The first of the winter gales can bring in rare birds blown right across the Atlantic from America. Vicky Heaney is so crazy about the birds of Scilly that she's given up her job and flat on the mainland to begin a new life on the islands. It's the natural world of Scilly, that's, that's my sort of passion. My background is zoology and then I did a PhD on seabirds. I used to be the one who collected everything you could from the garden and uh, looked at the birds in the garden and then uh, I think my dad has something to do with it. He was always an amateur birder um, and the art side of it, I've always wanted to draw and, and record the things I've been seeing. So whether it was recording the number of birds nesting in the garden each week, um, each summer, or it was actually drawing them, those were the things I did. Vicky's dream, though, is to be able to earn a living from birds by selling drawings, pictures and prints of the huge range of wild species found on the islands. And events are unfolding which may, just, give her the opportunity to do it. One of the most successful island crafts folk is Oriel Hicks, who has her own workshop, where recently she's been busy making new stained glass windows for Father Guy's churches. It's all um, handmade glass too, it's not machine made. Fantastic. Now Oriel has a new project which she hopes will capture the imaginations of both holiday makers and islanders. With the help of grants, she's managed to raise more than £100,000 for a brand new building beside her workshop. When it's eventually finished, it'll provide a showroom and studios for island craftsmen and women whose work can be seen and purchased by the visitors. Downstairs, there are four new workshops, like start-up units for, for craftspeople. And people could come and look around and watch the craftsmen at work? They can watch the craftsmen at work, they can buy stuff from the craftsmen, they can commission them, or they can have a go at doing it themselves. Three of them are already let um, when we open. Uh, the fourth one, I've got uh, several people interested. To earn some money, Vicky has got herself a job on the island's council. She's desperately hoping she'll get the last of Oriel's units and is now waiting to hear. Space, especially for artwork, doesn't come up so often on Sunday, you know. I think everybody's got a little dream in there, something that they've always thought, maybe I could make a go of that, and this is mine, I think, yeah. There are big changes afoot too at what is probably the single most important institution on Scilly. The island's main school is probably the most unusual school in England. There are primary units on three of the four smaller off-islands, but for their secondary education, the children must all come over to the main island of St Mary's, where they have to board during the week. But the school has had its difficulties. There's been a huge turnover of staff, resulting in problems of management, falling standards, and the school being taken into special measures. Morning. Hi. All right. All right, fine, thank you. Good. Now there's a new headmaster, Andrew Penman, the eighth head teacher in only seven years. OK, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mr Penman, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to, to working with you over the coming months and years. During his first year, Andrew set about helping to turn around the school's fortunes, and it seems to have worked. The Five Island School on the Art of Scilly has been labelled outstanding by Ofsted inspectors. It's a triumph for the school, which four years ago was put under special measures. We're delighted by their openness. This summer, the school came under scrutiny by government inspectors. The resulting Ofsted report, which was outstanding in every category, has made the school one of the best in Britain. But there's a problem. The building itself, dating from the 1960s, is falling to pieces. Everything comes at a price, and it's really, it, you know, that's a sort of symbolic of the dilemma that we're in. Do we pump in a lot of money in order to try and make these substandard rooms and buildings more appropriate for, for purpose? Or do we, uh, you know, spend that on educational things and, um, you know, books and resources that the, that the children need? Um, and it all goes back to this whole question of, you know, we'd be much better off if we could have a new school building. It's also, to be frank, pretty hideous, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's not the most beautiful building on the island, is it? 
The school is in a stunning location and the site is potentially valuable. From the back, though, the problems are all too obvious. The flat roofs are a problem. They're 60s flat roofs um, and they, they leak and the leaks stain all the tile, all the ceiling tiles down below, cause problems with the electrics. How much money would you need for a new school? They've been costings in the past and, and they were sort of six to eight million, but I think this, you know, in this day and age, you're probably talking about 12, 14 million, I would think. The school's been asking for a new building for years, to deaf ears. Now Andrew has decided to raise the question yet again, and this time, he's got a new tactic. I've got cheese, olive oil, balsamic, pecorino. 800 miles away, and Toby, the landlord of the Seven Stones pub, is enjoying a short break, along with a new companion. They've not known each other long, but Toby's been joined in his Tuscan hideaway by the new girlfriend, Juliet, and it seems to be going well. Should you get five kilos? <laughs> Toby and Juliet have rented an apartment in a wonderfully located hilltop farmhouse. So how's it going? Lovely. Lovely? Lovely, yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, it is lovely. Yeah, it's been really great. It's been really nice. We just look very relaxed. It's been a very relaxing holiday. Yeah, yeah it's it has. been it's been you know a really precious time actually, a really precious time. Nice time to spend together and, and also it's lovely to show Juliet here, the landscape of the middle of Tuscany, which is you know, it's nice to share something like that with somebody, you know. It's, it's been a beautiful time, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, really good. Now, the question is, how do you... I mean, where do you go from here? Because you've got this sort of 30 miles of the Atlantic Ocean between you. What, what, what happens now? What a question. I <laughs> <laughs> must have thought about it. Well, already, I mean, it must be difficult to find time to be together. That's the well, your life is very much on St Martin's, and my life is very much in Mausel, so... Yeah, well, who knows what the future may bring, really. Juliet has a daughter at school and has told Toby she can't move from the mainland. The only option for them to be together now seems to be for Toby to up sticks and leave Silly, and the pub he's worked so hard to make a success of. On the mainland at Penzance Airport, a VIP passenger is on his way to the Isles of Scilly. Bishop Bill, the Bishop of Truro, tries to get over to his remotest parish whenever he can. And there's always one place he visits when he's there. Throughout its troubled period, the bishop kept in constant contact with the Five Islands School and did what he could to help it overcome its problems. This is a Church of England school, and as such, Bishop Bill and his Board of Education has a direct responsibility for its well-being. Now they need to devise a strategy for a brand new school building. He's meeting the head, Andrew, and the chairman of the school governors, Tim Guthrie. We, we, we sit here in the core of the community. That's right. Without, without our school, there would be no community. Well, and, and of course it's true. I mean, how many children have you got mm. in this school? 260. Mm. How many people live on the island? Just over 2,000. So more than 10% of the people that mm. live on this island mm. are in this building now. 10% mm. of the island is here. Mm. 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 And the future skills of the, of the workforce and the employment That's prospects right. are here. Their contribution to the, to the islands and, and beyond is depending on this place. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. And I mean, it, you need to take it very seriously. Mm. They know that to win their argument, they'll need all the help they can get and play their cards well. For example, the islands are owned by Prince Charles and the Duchy of Cornwall. Uh, you know, the Duchy plays a major part in our lives here, and uh, it would be fantastic to think that perhaps Prince Charles would uh, mm. bring his sort of architectural uh, influences to bear, which would be wonderful. Yeah, he'd have great influence there. He'd have a lot, yes, he'd have a lot, he'd have a lot to do. Bishop Bill believes a new educational complex could benefit 
far more than just the island children. We do need a new school, but I think we need more than that. We need to, we need to have a modern philosophy of school, really. The, this, of course, is a unique place. I mean, here we are, right at the, on the southwestern tip of the British Isles, with amazing marine facilities all around us. Um, and I, all what I want to do is to develop the idea of that so that, for instance, there's a center to which people can come from other places, from other, other schools who are doing, let's say, A-level biology. This is a really fabulous place to do it. A sort of center of excellence. Yeah, a place that, that, that combines education, tourism, uh, the environment, um, that uses uh, IT, all those things, uh, which, which, in a sense, this place has to offer. Bishop Bill has good contacts in the world of politics and finance. He's promised to do whatever he can to get Silly its new school. Each year in the middle of October, there comes a moment which holds a huge significance for every islander. Silly is served by a single passenger ferry, the Silonian, which brings over visitors from the mainland every day and provides a reassuring rhythm to island life. Today is the Silonian's last sailing of the year. For the winter, she'll stay in dock in Penzance. This is the last the islanders will see of her until next spring, increasing their sense of isolation. The end of the busy holiday season is also a time for the locals to reclaim their lives. Community events can now be pursued with enthusiasm. Remembrance Sunday, for example, is supported in a way not often seen on the mainland, with virtually every family represented. Very good to have with us this morning um, some service personnel from NGMS Cornwall. It's very good to see you here. On big occasions like this, Father Guy shares the services with the other main religious denomination, the Methodists, and their minister, the Reverend David Easton, a popular figure whose congregations have been steadily growing. We give thanks for the memory and good example of those who have laid down their lives in the service of our country, especially those from these islands. We will remember them. Nationally, the long-term goal is for the two churches to merge, but in the meantime, they're working together locally more and more. On the main island of St. Mary's, for example, Guy's church is at the top of Church Street, and the Reverend David's has his chapel halfway down it. And when Guy's away, often it's the chapel that everyone uses. Congratulations on making it here this morning and not being blown away in the storms and gales. And we're very pleased, particularly on this morning, to welcome our Anglican friends. The Reverend David's style is very different from Father Guy. David's a keen participant, for example, in another incredibly well-supported island institution, the annual pantomime. Because that's how it would look, I think. I like, I'd like that, actually. Yeah. I don't mind whatever. That looks... Makes me look younger, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, actually. <laughs> right. T tell us why you like doing this, then, David. Yeah, I think why do I like doing this? Because I must be mad. <laughs> well, it's quite good. I saw it last year, and I thought it was really good fun to do this, and they seem to be enjoying themselves. And I thought, well, now I've finished all my researching and stuff, I could give this a go. And they very kindly gave me a small part. I'm the uh, Lord um, Chamberlain, so uh, I'm not a king or a queen or a, a, an old, uh, or, uh, you know, the Prince Charming or anything like that, no, I just, uh, that's me, some little part. So is, is it a serious part or are you looking for laughter? We're looking for laughter from the beginning, the curtains, the moment the curtains open to the moment the curtains close. This is constant, you know, rolling in the aisle stuff, this is. With no theatre or cinema and all the restaurants closed for winter, this is what you do here to help pass those long, dark evenings. The Reverend David has been here for six years, and as he's gradually got to grips with the oddities of island life, he started to play an increasingly large role in the community, a role which is shortly to be put to the test. 
Over on the mainland, probably the most spectacular example of enterprise and rejuvenation ever seen in Cornwall is the Eden Project, constructed in an old clay quarry. Huge biomes house lush tropical gardens and a huge selection of rare and endangered plants. Eden is really the creation of one man, Tim Smith, one of the most successful movers and shakers in the business and, by a happy coincidence, a close friend of Bishop Bill. <laughs> Today, it's to the Eden Project that the bishop has suggested Andrew and Tim from the Five Islands School on Scilly pay a visit. Hello, guys. Hello. Nice to meet you, nice Andrew you. Penman. Tim Smith, hi. Tim Guthrie. Hi. Nice to see you, Tim. I headmaster and chief honcho. Yeah, that's well, right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how far Bill's talked to you, but we are very, very keen that the islands should have a new centre for education. And I've always had this vision, really, of a, of a cradle to grave centre on the islands. I think it makes mm. an awful lot of sense. What would add real impetus to that would be for us to be able to say that um, we've been talking to the Eden Project, for instance, and even being cynical, you know, you've got people that you can that you could talk to that um, would be able to support us. I think it's a great idea. I think um, I couldn't think of anywhere that's actually a better place for what you want to do. I mean, I think I think I think the location's terrific. The human story of an island is terrific, which gives you a lot of unique opportunities. Mm -hmm. I do think that there's a chance, A, that the name Eden in association with you might open some doors. I also think there are a number of people we know um, that could be of assistance. Well, I think it went really well. It was a great opportunity to meet Tim and explain the kind of ideas that we're, that we're looking at. He's clearly had a fantastic vision. And if we can mirror with our very much smaller version of a, of a vision then, uh, and do anything even half approaching what he's done here on on the islands, that would be uh, that would be fantastic. But you know, he's a very he's become a very influential person, and I think the more people like um, Tim and the bishop that we can get on board beating the drum for us, then it's got to be helpful. Sometimes you feel when you're out on on, on that little rock, you you feel a bit isolated sometimes. But uh, I, I feel like I really want to go back and start this project going now. You know, he's inspired me immensely, really. Now Andrew and Tim can only wait to see if the slow grinding of wheels within wheels really can produce a result. Back on Scilly and down at Oriel's new workshop, the units aren't all finished, but the first of the craftsfolk are already starting to move in. The idea is to try to use as much of the island's natural resources as possible. For example, most of the items made here have been found on beaches around Scilly. Amongst Oriel's new tenants is newcomer Vicky Heaney. Right, well, cheers. To her delight, Vicky's been allocated the last remaining studio unit. It's straight down to work, setting up the lithograph printer and all her equipment. Vicky's thrilled at the opportunity she's been given. It really could change her life. At the moment, I'm just doing the pictures that I like, and I hope to find out that other people like them too and want to buy them. It, it'll be an absolute dream for me if this comes off. So, you know, I really hope that it's a, it's a success. And what is it about Silly that's held you in this magnetic force for all these years? I, I, I really... There's so many things. I absolutely love it. It's, it's the wildlife, it's the atmosphere. I actually grew up in a big city in Birmingham, but... I like the small town, I like the village, so I love the fact that I can walk down the street and I know everybody. I can go to the pub in the evening, I don't have to arrange to meet anybody, there are people there that I can chat to. And just being able to get on boats and go to Off Island and sort of not see another person on the beach all day. I so you that. really love it here, do you? I do, you absolutely. You don't regret moving over, do you? There's things I miss about the mainland, definitely. I miss uh, live music, there's some of the gigs that I can go to, certainly when I was living in Bristol, but I think the, the things I have on Silly make up for that tenfold. If the pictures and prints sell well, Vicky can give up her job on the council and devote herself full time to her new life and start to plan other adventures. It's the run up to Christmas on Silly, and for some, this is going to be a particularly difficult time of year. The thoughts and prayers of many islanders will be turning to one particular family. 
It's been nearly six months since the islands went into shock after the sudden collapse and death of the popular young lifeboatman Nathan Woodcock. Nathan was the lifeboat mechanic, the only full-time member of the crew. He was also extremely fit and one of the finest oarsmen on Scilly. The turnout for his funeral at the chapel was the biggest in living memory. Nathan leaves a partner, Vicky, and a two-year-old daughter, Megan. Now, just before Christmas, it's to the minister, the Reverend David, that Nathan's family has turned. Tomorrow, we have a service in the morning, which is also this year going to include a baptism, baptism of Megan, who's the daughter of Nathan, the young man who died uh, early in the summer. It's been a pretty terrible it year, has hasn't been, it? yes, in all sorts of ways, yes. So this baby represents a kind of a new start? Yes, it's a, a symbol of hope, like any child is. It's potential, isn't it? Life. You know, you look at a little baby, you don't know what lies in store for them, but you hope the best for them, you hope they have a good life. Anna being at Christmas as well, I think after a, a loss and a bereavement, the first Christmas is always very difficult, because you remember the people who are not there. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and I wonder if anyone would like to come up and help light the candles this morning. But sometimes there's another side to Christmas, when we feel a sense of sadness, because these shared times of celebration are also a reminder of those who are no longer with us. Today, we're going to be baptizing Megan Woodcock. We all know how tragically her young father, Nathan, died earlier this year. And so at this season of celebration, or on this morning when we share in this special service in church, we meet with thankfulness for Megan's young life and in the hope that it will be one of joy and fulfilment. But we also wish that this could have been an occasion which Nathan shared. The rest of us have our part to play, not just as passive observers, but as ones who will promise to support Vicky and Megan, family and friends who share in this occasion. Mommy. Megan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I sign you with the sign of the cross, the sign of Christ. By baptism, God has received you into the church. Thank you. There are many disadvantages and drawbacks to living in this remote island community, but when tragedy strikes and you need the help, support and love of friends and neighbours, there's probably no better place to be. In the next programme... Heike the Vet has some very specific resolutions for the new year. What are you hoping for this new year? A man! Sorry? A man. A man. <laughs> well, no, not that bad. <laughs> I think you'll go down a hit with a fisherman. That would be nice. <laughs> and against all the odds, there's a dramatic breakthrough in those ambitious plans for a new school for Silly. This is like a renaissance. It's growing out of that difficult period and everything is falling into place. I think it's a really exciting time for the school. Um, they don't know back on the island yet, but when they do, they'll be really delighted. Thank you.